In biological history, the evolution of whales, cetaceans from land-dwelling ancestors is one of the most astonishing and well-documented transformation stories. However, when transitional species like Pachycetus were discovered, they were often mischaracterized in popular culture, assigned the role of hybrid creatures. Pachycetus was not a cross between a crocodile and a whale, but an extinct hoofed mammal that served as the closest ancestor to whales. Its existence proves that life underwent an incredible adaptation process, shifting from a land animal to the giants of the deep ocean. The history of Pachycetus began in the 1980s in Pakistan, where paleontologists uncovered the first fossil fragments. The name Pachycetus, Pakistan whale, confirmed the geographical area of its discovery, specifically within the fossil-rich Kuldana Formation. This species is confirmed to have existed approximately 50 million years ago during the early Eocene Epoch, a crucial period for mammal diversification following the extinction of the dinosaurs. Notably, the inferred habitat from the surrounding sediments was not the vast ocean, but coastal areas, swamps, or near large freshwater lakes in a hot and arid environment. This finding provides crucial geological evidence, establishing a foundational understanding. The great transition of whales from land to water began in a freshwater or brackish water environment, a gradual adaptation rather than a sudden leap into the deep sea as was once erroneously believed. Modern anatomical and DNA analyses confirm that Pachycetus was an Archaeocetes, early whale, and belonged to the order Artiodactyla, even toed ungulates. This position revolutionized paleontology as it proved that whales evolved from a four legged land dwelling mammal, thoroughly debunking older, inaccurate theories. Specifically, genetic analyses have indicated that the hippopotamus, hippopotamus is the closest living relative of whales, sharing a more recent common ancestor than any other ungulate. Pachycetus is the first and most critical link identified in that evolutionary chain, providing anatomical evidence that the ancestor of whales began its journey toward the ocean, completing the narrative of one of the greatest morphological transformations in the history of life. Pachycetus was relatively modest in size compared to its gigantic descendants. It measured about 3.3 to 6.6 .6 feet, one to two meters long, making its general build similar to a gray wolf or a juvenile crocodile today. Its weight ranged from 100 to 250 pounds, 45 to 110 kilograms. Although belonging to the whale lineage, Pachycetus retained the skeletal structure of a land mammal. It had four fully formed legs with small hooves, an ancient trait demonstrating its capability as a cursorial running land animal. However, scientists observed that it began spending most of its time feeding in shallow water, marking the start of its journey from land to sea. The most crucial anatomical feature and the undisputed evidence of Pachycetus's link to the whale lineage lies in its middle ear structure. Pachycetus possessed a highly characteristic tympanic bone, ear bone, called the involucrum. This structure, with its thick, dense wall and shell-like curled shape, is a trait exclusive to whales, cetaceans, even modern species. This dense bone plays a vital role in isolating the middle ear from water pressure and sound transmission through the jaw, forming the foundation for the evolution of the whale's specialized underwater hearing mechanism. The discovery of this unique ear structure in a four-legged land mammal was deemed as unequivocal evidence by experts like Hans Thewissen and Philip Gingrich regarding the evolutionary link between artiodactyls and whales. Pachycetus's skull was long and narrow, a shape reminiscent of a crocodile. This similarity is a classic example of convergent evolution due to similar demands for underwater predation. Its eyes were positioned high on top of the skull, an adaptation allowing it to observe prey and surroundings while partially submerged, exposing only the top of its head, similar to the behavior of modern crocodiles or hippopotamuses. 
Its dentition showed a clear transition. Its molars possessed characteristics of terrestrial carnivores, while its premolars were sharp and triangular, similar to those of early whales. Although bearing the signature of a whale, Pachycetus's limbs were still fully adapted to land. Its hind limbs were relatively long and robust, confirming its running capability on land. Its swimming ability, based on spinal analysis, primarily relied on vertical spine undulation, up and down movement, for propulsion and using its four limbs as paddles for control, similar to how other ancient semi-aquatic predators swam. This contrasts significantly with later whale descendants like Rhodocetus, which evolved larger hind limbs for efficient kicking and the subsequent total transition to tail-driven swimming. Pachycetus was an obligate semi-aquatic carnivore, a critical ecological behavior that marked the shift toward whale evolution. The scientific deduction for this hunting strategy is based on complex anatomical analysis. Pachycetus's dentition was a defining blend. Its molars had high compressed cusps, reminiscent of the creodonts of the time, suggesting it could slice flesh. However, its premolars were sharper and displayed morphology similar to early whales proving it was an effective predator for fish and small aquatic vertebrates in shallow water. This evidence suggests Pachyceta strategically shifted its focus from terrestrial hunting to exploiting the abundant food source in shallow waters. Regarding hunting tactics, Pachycetus's lifestyle is modeled after modern semi-aquatic predators like the otter or small hippopotamus. With its eyes set high on the skull, a convergent evolutionary trait, Pachycetus could partially submerge its body to watch for prey, exposing only its eyes and nostrils. After identifying fish or amphibians in the shallow water, it used its swimming speed generated by lateral spine undulation to suddenly snap at the prey with a quick bite, retreating to the bank or very shallow water for processing. Despite its ecological advantage in exploiting shallow waters, Pachycetus was not an unchallenged apex predator in the mixed environment of the early Eocene. Its relatively small size, comparable to a gray wolf, made it a potential prey item and exposed it to intense predation pressure. Terrestrial predators, when on the bank for rest, mating or giving birth, Pachycetus was a primary target for large terrestrial predators of the time. These included larger creodonts, which were the dominant mammalian carnivores in the forests and riverbanks. As noted in papers by Thewissen et al, early whale ancestors had to compete with and evade these large mammalian hunters, which could easily subdue a modestly sized Pachycetus. This pressure from creodonts may have been one of the drivers forcing Pachycetus to spend more time in the water for safety. Large reptile threats. The greatest and most direct ecological threat to Pachycetus came from the giant reptiles inhabiting the same freshwater and brackish environments, specifically prehistoric crocodiles and gharials. Crocodilians. These creatures were fierce competitors for fish and also posed a grave predation threat, especially to Pachycetus young or adults drinking at the water's edge. The small size of Pachycetus made it vulnerable to the powerful sudden snap bites of crocodiles, much like how modern crocodiles ambush smaller ungulates. Consequently, Pachycetus was forced to maintain extreme vigilance and continuously move flexibly between land and water to avoid being ambushed by these formidable reptiles. Although Pachycetus bore the signature of a whale in its ear, its reproductive behavior remained tied to the land. As a mammal, Pachycetus was certainly viviparous, gave birth to live young. However, unlike later whales, Pachycetus is inferred to have come ashore to give birth and nurse its young during the early developmental stages, similar to modern seals or sea turtles, this behavior is necessitated by the fact that its hooved limbs were still fully adapted for terrestrial movement and giving birth on land would protect the vulnerable young from underwater predators like crocodiles. Like large ungulates, Pachycetus likely gave birth to only one young per cycle, with the young quickly gaining mobility under the mother's protection.
Regarding social behavior, scientists believe Pachycetus tended to be solitary or only formed loose family style social groups, mother and young, contrasting sharply with the complex, tightly structured pods of modern whales like the orca. As a small, solitary, semi-aquatic predator, Pachycetus likely hunted alone to maximize the efficiency of fishing in localized rivers and lakes. However, tactical grouping may have occurred in secure waters for rest or during the mating season. Furthermore, pressure from large predators like crocodiles and creodonts could have temporarily driven them into loose groups for communal defense. The lifestyle of Pachycetus represents a crucial transitional phase where the solitary hunting instincts and terrestrial reproductive biology of a land mammal were still dominant over the complex social structures of the emerging whale lineage. Pachycetus's most profound ecological contribution is not what it ate, but that it paved the way for what came after it, an evolutionary legacy of global significance. In terms of morphological evolution, Pachycetus is the first and most primitive fossil transitional link to whales. The presence of the unique whale ear bone, involucrum, in a four-legged mammal proves the evolutionary pathway from even toed ungulates on land to the entire cetacean order, including the blue whale, blue whale, the largest animal ever to exist on Earth. As the leading paleontologist Hans the Wissen pointed out, that tiny bone structure is the anatomical signature linking a riverbank animal to the modern colossal whale. Pachycetus is a prime example of how a group of animals can undergo a radical ecological niche shift. It marks the beginning of the transition from running on land and hunting small game like the creodonts to becoming deep sea dominant organisms. This shift was possible because the oceans were ecologically void following the KPG extinction event, offering a massive ecological vacuum to be filled. Pachycetus's existence proves the plasticity of evolution, demonstrating that one mammalian group successfully exploited a, um, a new niche, overcoming enormous structural barriers to create a dominant lineage lasting tens of millions of years. The disappearance of Pachycetus after the early Eocene, around 50 million years ago, was not an abrupt catastrophe, but a gradual process driven by biological competition and environmental change. The primary cause was the success of its own descendants. Species that evolved immediately after Pachycetus, such as Ambulocetus and Rhodocetus, had more advanced aquatic adaptations, like better developed hind limbs for kicking and superior underwater hearing, allowing them to exploit deeper and wider food sources. They quickly outcompeted and replaced Pachycetus, limiting it further to the shallow waters. Furthermore, environmental changes played a crucial role. Although Pachycetus lived in freshwater or brackish environments, scientists believe its kidney system had not yet fully adapted to salt control. As the geological environment shifted, leading to the encroachment of salt water into the delta regions, this physiological barrier created intense pressure. Pachycetus could not drink the salt water without suffering severe dehydration. Consequently, its limited semi-aquatic lifestyle became an evolutionary liability. It was neither an efficient terrestrial runner nor a successful marine swimmer, leading to its evolutionary culling, the less adapted species being replaced by more perfectly evolved descendants for life in the ocean. The disappearance of Pachycetus after the early Eocene was not an end for its evolutionary lineage, but rather a yielding of place to subsequent descendants that continued the journey toward the ocean with superior adaptations. This transitional process, clearly illustrated by consecutive fossils, provides excellent physical evidence of morphological evolution. Paleontologists often emphasize that this transformation could only have happened because Pachycetus successfully established the foundational hearing mechanism and initial semi-aquatic lifestyle. The extinction of Pachycetus did not mark the end, but rather the succession by the next generation, beginning with the species Ambulocetus natans, meaning the walking and swimming whale. This species marked a significant leap in aquatic adaptation and serves as evidence that the whale lineage successfully overcame the physiological freshwater brackish water barrier that Pachycetus still faced. 
as Amblycetus fossils were found in marine sediments. Amblycetus is considered a truly amphibious animal. Its hind limbs were significantly larger and much stronger than those of Pachycetus, featuring large webbed feet, reminiscent of the feet of modern seals or giant otters. On land, it could move slowly and clumsily, but underwater, it swam by powerfully paddling with its hind limbs, combined with vertical spinal undulation, a mechanism that showed considerable improvement. Furthermore, its nostrils had begun to migrate toward the top of the skull, a clear sign of continued evolution toward the blowhole of modern whales. Following Ambulocetus, the species Rhodocetus kasrani represented another critical evolutionary step, pushing the whale lineage deeper into the marine environment and further offshore. In Rhodocetus, the morphological change was distinct. The hind limbs had become shorter and more specialized, though still powerfully muscled for swimming, while no longer being effectively adapted for terrestrial locomotion. The structure of Rhodocetus's lumbar and caudal vertebrae, back and tailbones, is the most crucial evidence. The vertebrae were designed to flex more flexibly along the vertical plane than those of its predecessors, indicating that it had begun to propel itself primarily using the power of its tail and body, a swimming mechanism closer to modern whales. Rhodocetus was a whale that primarily lived offshore, marking the definitive loss of effective land mobility. This evolutionary process continued through later Archaeocetes, such as Basilosaurus and Dorodon, where the hind limbs were completely reduced to vestigial bones, completing the momentous transformation that Pachycetus bravely initiated and Ambulocetus and Rhodocetus successfully advanced.